Luke, go, go, go. Luke, go into the other chat. I don't want to open it up. Everyone's going to join before you can join. <laughs> oh, I got to drag you down into there. Yeah, hold on. Damn, how do I drag you into the other chat? Oh, well, I guess I'll have to kick someone out when Luke joins. Luke, Luke needs to join. What is he doing? If I open uh, up the floodgates, they just come pouring in. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I don't know. Oh, he, well, too he late. He responded in the DMs. He's like, Boomer Tech, let's go. Yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, he's, he's struggling, maybe. Oh, man. View channel connect. Oh, shit. Here they come. Yeah, spill it in. Spill it again. I'll have to delete like, this shit. Dropping from the fucking cliff, yeah. He's just, he's fucking streaming in the other one. <laughs> what is he? What, are, what, are you what a madman. <laughs> oh, God. Right. What the fuck? Where is he? <laughs> All right, one random person is going to get shot. I'm sorry. Unless Luke joins in time. JJKL. No, he's not in here. Well, Boomer Tech. Go? Boomer Tech for the win. I tried dragging him into the other room, but uh, when you're dragging someone, the the sidebar doesn't scroll with you while you're dragging it. So, it oh, I see. Yeah, because all right, because we have a whole auditorium. Yeah, so trying to pull him out of the middle of the audience to another VC is impossible. <laughs> Discord, what are they doing? What is Discord? Motherfucker! Doing? <laughs> what did he do? <laughs> I can't do this without him. He started He's streaming the to the, the other time. one. <laughs> He's like, Damn it! He's like, I'm next. I sent him a message. Just told him it was in. The, it was below the this VC. All right, all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna bounce, and then Luke can take this spot. All right, all right. Nobody move. Ulan, Nobody move. thank you, thank you for just, stopping just give by. Me, give, give me the okay. Ready? Well, I don't know what Luke's doing. <laughs> I don't know. Like, all right, all right. Come on, Luke. Luke, Luke come on. <laughs> I'm, Let's I'm chill. The Luke. Uh, Luke. It's like a fucking senile old man and, and lost in a Kmart with his pants around his ankles. I don't know where the fuck he went. Oh, can I can I right click to move someone to another channel? I can. Man? I could have done it the whole time. Oh, ah. hey, Luke. How's Buddy, are you here? Yeah. Like a yeah. We're running okay. a little bit what late. Happened? That's all good. Couple seconds. Couple seconds. Didn't take too long, I think. You got my screen? Uh, yep, I can see everything. Got him. Splatter brain, everybody. Luke Valentine Art, baby. Ethereon Art. Both of their names and in art. Both are trying to do comics. I mean, Luke's been doing it a little bit longer, but Ethereon has just started theirs. So, uh -huh. a little thank background you, for thank everyone. For having me. Yeah, thank you for I'm having honored. me. I'm honored to go right after uh, Cube Sona and Oolong. I feel, uh oh, I got we got something to live up to. <laughs> we got something to show up to, but uh, and, uh, yeah, this I is my... I did I did say that I wanted to conserve some of the conceptual stuff that I had, but uh, after being here for so long, you know what? Uh, fuck it, I'm gonna share one of my screens, and when the Hell time's yeah. ready, I'll uh, I'll show off some of the things that I had, uh, and uh, uh, that was conceptualized, but uh, oh. not yet. I'll wait till the uh, I'll wait because I'll just slide the pictures into this screen. Uh, when the time's ready, but uh, yeah, we're gonna get a bit of a sneak peek that uh, usually people who pay for this shit get to see. Oh, I I am one of those people that pay to see that sh those things. <laughs> Sick. Let's, show the Patreon. All right, let's go, Luke. Where are we beginning at? You do you do All what? Right, so you do what again? I, I just uh, yeah, I make a comic called Splatterbrain, and it's about a hundred and it's not done. It's over 150 pages so far. You can read it for free. And unfortunately, I didn't uh, upload all the pages to Newgrounds because I tried uploading, uploading like 20 pages at once, and it, it, Newgrounds doesn't like that in one post. So just I had to upload the tapas. I don't like it. I don't like it either. I'm a, I'm a Newgrounds <laughs> boy. I like Newgrounds. But uh, you want to read it, you got to go to tapas, unfortunately. That's what we're on right now, though. This is the uh, this is the cover. She got big shoes. Just wanted to show that off. You like them but, big uh, shoes, them thick laces? I love, dude, I love me drawing some sneakers, and I just wear flip-flops. I don't, I don't wear sneakers, but I love drawing them. <laughs> but, yeah, no, so the plan here is we're going to go over comics. We're going to run through, you know... I guess the the word of the day is flow. We wanna we wanna show you how you flow from one panel to the next seamlessly, 
I don't want to give myself too much credit, but I try. I try to make it kind of play like a movie in your head. You know what I mean? When mm-hmm. you're reading it. So that's the goal here. So we're going to go over that. I loved what they said about character design. I, I, I hopped in when they started going off about that. And uh, I, w- I don't want to ask him what he thinks about my character, uh, uh, Cube Sona, because because he probably he sees anime girl. He goes, nah, no, no, no. I want big mus- muscle boy. We got a big muscle boy in here. Don't worry. We we got him. He's he would love to see Bone. Hold on. We, he's seen Bone. He's seen him. But yeah, uh, post post Bone in the uh, in the chat. I'm avoiding the chat. I know they're gonna be calling me Goober. They're gonna be calling me Dweeb. Four Eyes. <laughs> I don't need that right now. I, I had to get Zen. I had to light the incense. I drank some tea, decaf tea. You know, I'm like, okay, we're teaching. 100 people plus i tried to join on the uh on the server they said too many watchers you can't watch so i had to go on youtube <laughs> and i only found out about the youtube uh live stream like 20 minutes ago so i missed most of everything but i was listening i was listening but uh yeah without further ado let's jump in i'll drop i'll, I'll uh i'll hop to um uh the first page now that's you know, how long that? ago have you how long ago was this when you worked on this this page <laughs> This is from June 4th, as you can see. Can you see my mouse? Does the mouse yeah, show up? June yeah, 4th, 2020. Yeah. yeah, that was one. It, so it's almost the anniversary. Almost the anniversary. And uh, I can't stop, though. It's it's It makes me negative money because uh, I spend all the time doing this instead of friggin' commissions and making fan art that would attract real eyes. And, uh, but I, I, I don't know, there's a fire and I got to make it. I got to keep making it. I think everybody's got that. You know what I mean? We all got to... We all want to shove our OCs in everybody's face. I, the whole world's got to see it, you know. So I'm, me and me and Aether, we're gonna uh, we're gonna teach you guys how to do it, how to show that off, get how the to world an empire, yeah, and utilize there. titties for greater power. Exactly. Well, yeah, exactly. We want to, uh, you know, the the this isn't exactly NSFW. This is this is relatively safe. I mean, this is like PG thirteen. What we got going on? We're like if Cube Sona and Oolong were Cartoon Network, we're Adult Swim. We're mm-hmm. we're uh we're the Yang to their Yin. You know what we're I mean? We're Adult Swim Toonami. We uh we we're uh, uh, we're, we're, we're the, hey, we're I don't want to say we're Toonami. Before. We're a little that they they might have to take up some of the Toonami. I don't want to. I'm not trying to toot our own horn. I'm just trying to you know I I want I want to captivate the audience that they had because I'm sure we've already lost like we we've we've probably already lost so much attention now because I've been rambling. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, rest assured, uh, yeah, we are the adults when before they shilled out to uh, to having the Cleveland show. We're uh, we're the Space Ghost Coast to Coast. We're Space uh, Ghost. We're, I don't know why I want to say we're Squidbillies. No, I, don't <laughs> like, I don't know jack shit about Squidbillies. I know it looks bad. We're we're squid bi- I Listen, no insults. I'll insult myself. I'm Squidbillies. Aether over here. He's uh he's Aqua um, Teen. Aqua, that's what I was going for, dude. Oh, boy. I couldn't remember the name. Your Aqua Teen, your home movies, your old school. Mm-hmm. Me, I'm the trash. So welcome to the trash. Your trash. I'm I'm the trash teacher. I'm gonna teach you guys how to make comics. Uh Anything you wanna you wanna shill or anything, Aether? You wanna say anything? Uh, uh, why do I have to shill? I have to. Oh. Well. What? Let, let me see here. Something. It's uh, just, I guess, uh, the uh, uh, keep giving me money on Patreon. God damn it. Yeah. I don't want to ever do commissions again. I want to be able to uh, focus on my comic. Uh, oh, that'll yeah. be uh, showing some snippets of uh, pretty soon. Uh, uh, please. I, 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 am a, I am a whore for that, uh, for, for that currency. For that green. Please. God, <laughs> dollar, God dollar, damn it. Come on. Yeah. Personally, uh... Yeah, my, my Patreon could could use some help too, but I'm not gonna shill it until the end, okay? So, but yeah, just uh, if I seem to be if I seem to be like slagging behind or something, just be like Luke, just bring me down to earth, tether me back down to earth, uh, Zin Zin or, or Aether, whatever whatever we need to do, because I go on a tangent and it won't stop. But uh, yeah, let's let's get this. Oh, I'll let it happen. Started. <laughs> yeah, you can you can let it roll. Whatever, I'll whatever you want to do. Yeah. But it's on you then. It's on you if I if I make a blunder of this and uh, screw it up for the animation segment. People are gonna be like, oh, what a headache this guy is. And anyways, anyways, <laughs> let's 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 settle yeah, down. About low. Well, about on. We're trying well. to relax, you know. So like, uh, get your get your chai tea, whatever you're drinking. Have have yourself a. I'm, I've got water here right now. Get your chai tea. Get your all. Your, get all your colonics. In get all a, your colonics. Uh, in a pile. 
But, Single uh, file collide. Talk about the fucking comic. This is the comic. Bad. Let's go. Okay, anyway, <laughs> how we want to start off with a comic. So you guys got an idea. You got your OCs. You know, you've got the shape language down. You know, you've got the characters. Now what you got to do is you got to introduce them, you know? And there's like three things that the way you want to introduce your comic starting off. And the only reason I, I kind of I kind of uh, got on here and I'm like, you know, maybe maybe I, I know what I'm talking about is because I've got like four failed com- comics completely like binned. I put them on Smack Jeeves back in like 2015 and the owner of Smack Jeeves was like, get the fuck out of here. We don't need this shit. This comic is trash. So I came back with a vengeance. I did my studies. You know, I looked up, okay, how do we really, how do we really make, make flow happen? Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the best thing to do is get inspiration from, uh, you know, the mangaka or old school comics. You know, if you want to, if you want to draw something that kind of moves from panel to panel. So starting off the way I introduced it is like, okay, so you got like a city here, right? Nothing's going on. It's pretty abandoned. Uh, you know, then there's one character in the middle, right? This is like both a character introduction and a mild sort of like environmental introduction. It's a city. There's just a a dump truck over here and some weird shadows walking about. You don't get too much. That's the way it is. You got to introduce like bite-sized detail in your comic book. Basically, when you're starting off with the narrative, you don't want to throw too much shit at the wall. That's one. Can I say that word here? I don't know. Are we good? Can yeah, you're good. F- fuck. Can we say We're the shit word? Shit. Hey, cool it. We gotta. We gotta. Uh, we gotta wait till we get to the f word. But uh, <laughs> anyways, we're building up to it. But that's what I'm trying to focus on here. I'm trying to focus on building up. You want to build up your environment. You want to build up to the introduction of your characters. You don't want to rush things. People like I even get comments where it's like, oh, like they want me to introduce new characters and shit. And it's just like, you know, hey, settle down. Sometimes you got to give it a slow burn. You don't want to rush anything. It's a web comic. You can change it anytime you want. Uh, so there's really no pressure in that regard, but the way you want to start off is just, you know, introduce the environment. What do we got going on? So it's a city. Boom. Here's a character. She's drinking, she's drinking something called shiitake soul stuff. It's just the beverage of this universe. All gone. She's done. You know, I'm not going to read it. I feel like I, that might be a little embarrassing <laughs> if I read it off to you. But it's, maybe it's like bedtime. People are falling asleep to this already. She's singing a song, some weird some weird monstrosity, some like Silent Hill type shit is popping up behind her. It tries to grab her. She she turns around. Introduction. You see your face. You see your face in the first. I wanted to build up to it. You don't see your face until, you know, the end of the page. And then boom, uh, this is the character, you know? Okay, what do you know from this? She's a blonde. She's a cute blonde girl. Mildly anime. I try to get away from anime, but I can't help it. I'm a weeb. Uh, mm-hmm. So there. She's basically just uh, nonchalant about this m- horrible monstrosity behind her and she's just telling him you know hey listen listen big guy toilets if you're looking for the bathroom they're around the corner because uh she if you can tell from the little detail here she uh she's not wearing no pants she's got a she's got a swimsuit under this and she's a lifeguard you can tell by the little symbol boom lifeguard and uh so she's giving instructions she thinks she's being harassed by a stranger, basically. That's the idea. She's walking along. She's singing uh, Beach Boys, which I might have to change if I ever publish this physically because I, I think they're litigious. They'll sue me over uh, the use of uh, Beach Boy lyrics. I don't yeah, know. You'll get totally screwed <laughs> on that one. What? What would you say? Yeah, you'll get screwed on that one. Uh, that, that's going to be you uh, much Do you like think a... it's vague enough, though? Bodies in the sand? It sounds almost like Metallica. But then uh, the, uh, oh, uh, Jojo they... can barely get away with that. I haven't watched much of it, but I know that they uh, they uh, they can barely. They got a lot of characters that uh, have song titles or song references yeah. that they cannot use in certain properties. Shining Diamond. Oh my god. But uh, yeah. So okay, I'm learning too. I'm learning too. This is a this is a. Uh, <laughs> I'm learning. You're learning. That's that's the best. Uh, that's the best way to be. So then, boom. She goes. My name is Mickey Bell. We've introduced the character. We don't know nothing right now except this girl is not wearing pants. And she's walking through a, a, a empty city, looks to be. And uh, there's a horrible ghoul behind her that um, that goes to grab her and just completely, he whiffs. He completely whiffs. He misses, crack. She doesn't notice a damn thing. She's turning down a corner. There's a bloody handprint here. And then this is where I dropped a little bit. This is probably where most people go, reading, get me out of here. And they stop reading. <laughs> if you look at the view, view count on Tapas, it goes from like, 5,000 views to like half that. 
which I hear is normal, but uh, you never know. I, it could be Jade. They just hit reading here. But you don't even got to read this. It's kind of just backstory to the character. You don't got to, you know, you don't got to learn about her likes and dislikes here. But I'm integrating that. Here's the thing. You got to integrate that to make it so that's it's not really exposition. It is exposition, but why why are we being, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Exposited to? Why are we being yeah, told all this? expository stuff. It's so, just, uh, it's contextual. It's exactly, contextual. yeah. The way I try to balance it out is I had this exposition going on, this big exposition dump. I tried to keep it simple, um, but I tried to add a lot to the image. You know, okay, what do you got going on? You got this other thing creeping through the corner. You got this weird blob following her um there's some weird uh what is this a uh, biohazard trash bins okay something's going on here where's she going She's going here this little building but um then we cut to a whole new scene where it's the inside of a uh it's actually the inside of like a lifeguard office right and you can yeah. tell that the, uh, the way the goal i'm trying to the, the thing i'm trying to do here is that you were reading Splatterbrain, and uh, you don't really... Maybe you don't give a damn. Maybe you don't give a damn about all the wording. You don't have to read it. I want it to be that, you know, because this is like a, a comic book, a graphic novel. Graphic is the number one thing here. Graphics, you know, that's what you want to utilize. This isn't a novel. This isn't a book. You've got more to work with. So imagery is number one. You know, you want to focus on the images. Do not go crazy with all the text. And I know, I, I know I'm kind of full of it because look at all this friggin' text here. You're like reading a third grader's like uh, essay on uh, this or that, but basically the idea here is she is um, she is basically this is her employee application for uh, becoming a lifeguard, and the way it reads, uh, maybe you would be able to pick that up. Is you know employee applications. I probably should have made this glow a little better, but you see your name there, Mickey Bell, and it's it's Mickey. It's not Mickey, but I'm I'm a honky, so I call it Mickey. <laughs> but I've been told by other people. It's pronounced Mickey. Okay. It's a little hard for me. But anyways, you see all this stuff. She uh she was basically explaining why she's a lifeguard. I'm not gonna drone on. If I'm if I'm going too slow, uh feel free, uh Zin Zin to just just uh, say Luke, get on with the point. But anyways, here's the thing. <laughs> you're in the office still. You've got the blinds, you know, okay, you're, you're looking through the window. There's something, there's something behind the blinds. What's going on? Then you see her in her lifeguard tower, you know? You see her lifeguard tower from before right there. She's hanging out. She's, uh, she's looking. She's like, oh, where is everybody? She's, she doesn't know what the hell's going on. There's clearly something going on. What is it? Uh, if, you guys aren't, if you guys aren't paying attention, it's, it's something of a zombie apocalypse, basically. She is in a... They're not zombies per se, but I'm not going to get hung up on the minutia here. She's an oblivious blonde in a lifeguard in the zombie apocalypse. That's the idea. That's what we're trying to go with, you know? You know the tropes. The blonde girl gets totally destroyed in all the horror fiction. She's the first to go. What's going to happen to Miki? Anyways, she, uh, you get the biohazard symbol. There's a lockdown. She's ringing the bell. Ding, ding, ding. She wants food. She's hungry, you know? She's trying to get in here. She's you see the footprints. There's a little uh there's a little um another hint towards what's going on. She uh she doesn't understand that they're closed because she's just hungry. She's going by her uh she's going by her nose. She she gets the food from this this ghoul hand and gives them money. And then she <laughs> runs off back to her. That's the see that's the thing. Splatterbrain is is part horror. I want to introduce some really horrific shit here. And it's part, you know, gags. It's part like, you remember Shaun of the Dead? Yeah. Uh -huh. You know how, yeah, you know how, like, he does not realize he's in a zombie apocalypse until, like, 15 minutes into the movie, at least. No, even longer, like 20. He goes to the grocery store. He's doing his own. So I guess I kind of ripped off Shaun of the Dead, only it's got, like, a sexy anime lifeguard instead of uh, our, our good boy Shaun. Uh, but anyways... Uh, she's running back to her to her uh, little lifeguard place, and she's talking about how uh, you know her 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 coworker is gonna take over her shift. And then we cut to you know give give me the SpongeBob six hours later here, and um, <laughs> we got a siren going off. We got you know the city, uh, and then there's her lifeguard tower again. We cut to the inside of this, and I feel like I definitely could have done this better because some people don't even know what the hell's going on here. Uh, that might be on me, but um, she's back to listening to the Beach Boys, and she's playing a ripoff of the Game Boy Advance called the Loverboy 3000, and she's playing a ripoff of WarioWare, 
uh, or Wario Land 4 called Coffee Mummy. She's just gaming, you know. We cut. Uh -huh. uh, here's a little trick I did where I tr uh, it's the same setting. You can introduce the character in different positions. And no, she doesn't have like a bunch of twins. She is just like it's transitioning. To, like, <laughs> yeah, I have some goes. of that in mind too. It's 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 a rough sketch, but uh, when we talk about like the mechanics of the flow, I'll show that off. But I yeah. definitely have some of the clone things too. But I actually have actual clones in there too. But let me not give too much away. Luke, with yeah. with this part, when I first read this, I imagine that during those six hours, and then when that when that siren's going off, that this is her way of like not hearing anything or just kind of like being in her own exactly. little world. Hell yeah, exactly. Cause she's she's gaming. She's a gamer. You can't interrupt it. She's uh she's in the zone. So she's first off when the siren's going off, she's got her headphones in, and you hear like the thump thump thumping on the door, and she's still gaming. She's she's she you know she's reclining, and uh, then she just kind of falls asleep, and then kablam, she gets woken up, and this is where we're introducing the second character. This is where we're introducing the other main character. The dichotomy here going on, the yin and yang aspect. It's all about duality. The Splatterbrain is all about the cute anime lifeguard and uh, the other character who we're about to introdu introduce here. How, do, how does she survive through the zombie apocalypse? What do you think? So she realizes, oh my god, it's daytime. What did I do? She conked out. She fell asleep for hours. And uh, the she... Um, we introduce the ghoul, the ghoul's back, the weird, abstract, kind of uh, Silent Hill kind of monstrosity. And it's in the shadows. And then when the shadows come up, boom, it's got this horrific face. And a uh, little bit of violence here. I might change all this to blue to make it more uh, cartoony and less horrific. Uh, so sorry if, if this is a bit much, but it, it is called Splatterbrain. So I guess you know what you're getting into. Uh, but yeah, here we're introducing the next character. And he's, you know, he's cracking a ghoul head. He's got his glove covered in, uh, in uh, some viscous juices. And uh, <laughs> there's, there's Miki in the background with her lifeguard tower. And then he gets this weird, this weird like tank. And he pours some, uh, some kind of fluid, some clear fluid, cleans himself off. And then he cleans the ghoul off. What's he doing? Uh, hello? <laughs> he, he turns, what's that? He's cleaning him off, man. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's giving him a, him a bath. That's all. A bath. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's his goal here. That's his modus operandi. He's got no other. Uh, he's not a bad dude. Then he gets uh, he gets distracted by Miki over here, and uh, he gets swarmed. He gets swarmed, but he's a big dude. He can handle it. So what does he do? He gives him the German suplex, the, the, <laughs> the, the, the kind of jumping German suplex, just completely crushes his guy, rolls off him. And, uh, you know, this is the big action scene. This is where I tried to transition, get the real, uh, get people really like, okay, like, this is all about movement, right? And they talk about how, um, you know, when you've got the scenes that are kind of more dialogue heavy, exposi exposition, you can do stuff where it's like, you know, one big panel and, uh, you know, it's just characters in a room talking, nothing's going on. But when you have the action scenes, you do one of two things. You either kind of have to show it in multiple panels transitioning to to really show the the movement get it dynamic and uh usually what people do what they tell you is um with each panel don't focus too much on detail just get it out there don't draw a background don't um you know don't focus on like the nitty-gritty just get Absolutely, to the point yeah. what's that yeah, because, like, uh, I would even notice whenever I see a lot of uh, a certain panel work, because, like, it, with every panel, you're, like, fragmenting a whole page. Yeah. Uh, so, essentially, a lot of details are going to get lost anyways, and the attention is really on, like, the action of the characters. The background is, uh, that that is just negative space, and you want to fill up as much of that as possible, at least depending on how, what kind of tone you're trying to set. Usually, if you have a lot of background there, uh, you're, you're, it, it almost makes the feel, scene feel a little bit uh, quiet. A little absent uh maybe in, like an anticipate something but usually when you have action like this you want to focus on all the things that are actually going on at the, like at that time yeah exactly but uh what they usually do is they cap off i think i think um boku no hero does it where they have you know the movement the dynamic movement and then they the guy does a big spread of like an intense punch maybe he's punching through yeah. some guys like you know and that's one thing I didn't pick on pick up on until a little later on, you know. So mm -hmm. I've got the whole action. He's he's completely sorry about that. Is that too much? That I might make that blue. I might completely. He totally guts the zombie 
or the ghoul. It's not a zombie. Uh, the ghoul. And uh, it's just a, a, a nightmarish mess. And then this kind of shows what you're dealing with. You know, you're dealing with a mega super soldier over here. He's spooking the zombie. Even the zombie's like, I don't want to mess with The zombie's already got his guts out, and he's already, and he's, he's, he's petrified. Because Bone, oh, I, I gave it away. His name's Bone. Uh, <laughs> but, but yeah, Bone here, his whole thing is he's like a slasher villain to the slasher villains. That's the goal. That's what I'm trying to convey here. You know, he's got this big, these big shoulders. He's got a pointy head and red eyes. He's a menace. Mickey's round. She's like, you know, she looks, she looks more appealing, but uh, she looks way less menacing. That's the uh, kind of dichotomy. Like I was going back to that. Is it like a duality? Anyways, back to the story. What he does, he grabs his gun and then all these friggin' ghouls are like, oh, what's he doing? And then, boom, you got the big, you know. He just blew them all up, basically. Hell yeah! He, I like he, I like uh, how you utilize the panels so far in like many different ways, like to keep that's, it creative. He, that's one of the things. Yeah, that's one of the things where where I was like, okay, I'm I'm doing something right. I was getting compliments, and like people were like, yeah, you got like the panels are going. I'm trying to stay creative with it. Like yeah. if you go back here to when Miki is eating the uh, or trying to get the burger, I try to utilize the like. Yeah, the, like, I was gonna compliment that. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Um, I try to do that more often. I think uh, as I went further on, it got a little more, it got a little less experimental. But I'm jumping back into it now. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. and basically making everything. Uh, and and I, this transition from like uh, looking at all the zombies around him, the cluttered panels, mm -hmm. and then it just zooms yeah, yeah. out to like that big explosion. Yeah, it's that yeah. contrast right there is really nice. The exclamation point at the end of the sentence. That's yes, because mm -hmm. that's one of the things things I wanted to talk about. Like. Time, you create time. As the, as the comic book artist, you're creating time uh, by how many panels you basically break every, everything down in. So what I mean to say is, uh, you know, people are going to be reading this and you really have to focus on like, you know, how somebody who doesn't know jack about your characters or your world, you really have to focus on like how they are going to perceive this. And the way you do that is you manipulate kind of like what's going on think about how an anime they will literally have like a whole dialogue exchange they'll be giving a friggin' speech while punching each other and it's like you know that's not like real life people aren't gonna be like talking <laughs> yeah. talking like you know essays worth of uh shit talking uh, in between you know catching punches what you what they're doing a lot of the time is they're like kind of looking inside the character's head I, at least this is my interpretation it's what the character's thinking at the moment so mm -hmm. that's kind of something you got to utilize when you're when you're creating your comic you're 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 making it flow. You can slow it down with more panels. You want to break down one big scene with multiple panels or like you know little tricks here and there that we'll talk about uh when we get to them but um you 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 can re you are the master of this universe. You can you can control time and if you want to make something just completely go whoosh, you do something like this, where it's just a, it's just a huge explosion, and mm -hmm. then you know, cut to a uh, bone standing here with his cape, and then the 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 fog settles, and there's Miki, and this is this is when they meet each other, and then boom, title pitch, splatter brain, bam, yeah. dun dun dun. Yeah. There we go. You know, yeah, that, that was so just the cool. intro. Jeez. That was just the that was the pilot. That was the pilot episode here. We got we got half the pilot down. But um, now before we go on, because the next would be pilot O two, right after this page. Yeah, exactly. Uh, before we go great. on, uh, what made you settle on these characters? Because you mentioned you had like three or five other failed comics. I'm, I'm like, glad you actually. Uh, I'm glad you actually asked that because when when Cube Cube Sona was talking, I keep wanting to call him Cubie. When he was talking about <laughs> how, uh, I'll call him Cubie from now on. When Cubie was talking about <laughs> how um, how like character designing, like it takes time and it takes multiple iterations. The thing about Splatterbrain is it took me like. I didn't rush it. I didn't rush the idea. I didn't rush the characters. It was all about, like, I was playing, like, Let It Die. I was playing, if anyone knows that game, it's this, like, indie, uh, Suda 51 inspired kind of, um, uh, hack and slash game that's been compared to Dark Souls. And it was, like, free to play. That was the main thing. But the aesthetic was inspired by Q Hayashida, who is the, uh, that's the, the mangaka behind Doro Hidoro. So it's a very nasty, messy kind of looking game with a very unique uh, environment, post-apocalyptic environment. 
but I also was playing Splatoon. This is like 2016 or 17, I forget. So I wanted to blend both of those. So you've got the nitty gritty and, and nasty, and then you've got the hyper color. And that idea was settled in my head. I'll try to be less abstract. I'll try to kind of give you the rules uh, here. But I had that idea in my head. And from that, I was like, let's create some characters that are like DIY fashion, you know, like post-apocalyptic looking uh, kind of like gritty, but also cute and colorful. And I drew Miki Bell first and her design was completely different. I might pull it up later if I can find it. But that would be interesting I, to see her early so, prototype. Yeah. Yeah. I've got, well, well, I'll show a little bit, but I've got some on my patron patreon and you can see that for as little as a dollar you can eat the whole thing up it's all there you'll see the iter but there were multiple iterations and i only settled on her design right before i started the comic she was just you know she always had the like one piece suit because i wanted a cute bikini girl uh but and i and i thought of her name i guess subconsciously so i gave her the bell-shaped hair um oh and uh you know because and a lot of people say she looks like Isabel from, uh, what's it called? Animal Crossing. So that might have been a subconscious influence. I don't know. Yeah, uh, I was thinking Baywatch, but I, I guess we're going every, to... Everybody... <laughs> yeah, they, I, don't know what, I don't even know what Baywatch is, but uh, yeah. I barely <laughs> do. I just know, what, Pamela Anderson? What, uh, what yeah. Uh, uh, play. I don't now know. that anyway. you mention it, though, there, there does seem like some Isabel uh, reference there somewhere. Some... Well, you know, actually, the, the final touches for Miki, because I love the characters with the big gloves and the big shoes. Tifa's got that. Old school Tifa. She got the big gloves. She got the big shoes. And uh, it's just, it's like a cute little, it's goofy, right? But it did not, the goofy ensemble was not complete until I gave her that like little like um, ponytail. I think that like high, high, uh, like that top of the head ponytail. Let me find Miki again. Is uh, it's it's. I actually yeah. saw Arl from Poyo Poyo, and I was like, oh, she's got that. It's kind of goofy. It's kind of cute. Uh, that'll do. And from that point on, I was like, settled. Okay, we're good. And, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, a real we, heavy we, kind of a, a updo thing. Yeah, we. I'll, I'll let me go back to the actual character design. Here she is. And then I just like the uh, the jacket because you got to think about the environment she's in, right? So that's another thing you got to consider. What what do you want, like? Let's let's nail it down. Let's give it bullet points. Like we're given a PowerPoint presentation, which I should have done, but uh, <laughs> I let's go off the cuff. Let's let's just go. Let's just yeah. roll with it. But um, first you want to settle on like the the aesthetic, I guess you could say, uh, of what like I guess that'd be your style. How do you how do you draw? How do you like to draw? What do you like to do? For me, I like doing pinup stuff. So that just happened. I like pinup and I like super muscular dudes. 80s you know power trip kind of like uh he-man stuff i like that you know but i also like the cutesy uh anime pinup stuff but yeah so that's where the jacket came the jacket comes in because you think about the environment there and what kind of environment is my lifeguard uh my cutesy lifeguard in the post-apocalypse what what kind of uh outfit is she gonna wear besides you know the lifeguard bikini well she's got She's got the uh, she's got a jacket. It's gonna protect her skin from the hot sun, right? That's what's mm -hmm. going on here. And um, you know, the zombie apocalypse. She's got to get the guns. She's got to get the guns. And I'm actually in the middle of drawing that segment in the comic. She's finally been. In, she's finally found the guns. Where does she get them? You'll have to you'll have to uh, read Splatterbrain to find out. But um, yeah, no. So that's the idea here. And then and then the cross. It's just to bring give a little levity. She's a she's a character with faith in the post-apocalypse that's a bit of a subversive thing because you watch those zombie movies and uh the priest gets gored i mean you watch those italian zombie movies the police the any of any character of faith is completely like decimated as far <laughs> oh, as i yeah. they're destroyed so and then also the ditzy blonde she's uh you know she's she's skinny dipping and then jason you know completely uh takes her head off so that's the idea here is we're getting a little subversive right um but yeah, back to uh, just making the... Oh, crap. I didn't mean to introduce that part. My bad. Uh, let me get back to this. Oh. Let me get back to where we were at. But um, yeah, anyways, what it comes down to when you're designing your character, because uh, that's the first thing when making a comic, is just like think about like how they're going to look in this environment. And like I said, I did not settle on the designs until like two years after I came up with the idea. It was in my brain, like fermenting. Mm -hmm. And Bone took forever. Bone was like... 
uh, it's funny that uh, w- what the design Oolong was working on because he was talking about Bancho. Bone started off Bancho. Like I was inspired by stuff like um, like uh, Guilty Gear and um, uh, like old school Capcom fighters. Like uh, like I'm I'm thinking of uh, man. Mar- probably like the Marvel versus Capcom, all that stuff. So I wanted to give exaggerated features, but when he started off, he had like these big idiot shoes, and uh, they just <laughs> didn't look like they didn't look like something you could <laughs> run in. They were like, <laughs> massive Kingdom Hearts shoes. They look well, no, they they were they look like flippers actually. They look like big true. metal flippers with like spikes on the end of them, and he just looked ridiculous. And he had more of a skinny bu- build, and that was before I was like, okay, I want him to kind of look like a slasher villain almost. Okay, you know, so you still to... look like a punk sideshow Bob. Exact, dude. <laughs> you nailed it. Instead of a palm tree head, he had a big spike. He actually didn't have the spike on his head until like later on. I did not steal that from. Uh, I know there's a Guilty Gear character with a big dumb spike on his head. Didn't steal it from that. Uh, I forget his name, but uh, that it just it just came to me. But um, yeah. So you wanted to give him kind of like big shoulder, and he's kind of a square design. Back to going to like shape language. If Mickey's yeah. more round kind of like a block because he's what what can a square be a square can be both uh protective it can be kind of sheltering but at the yeah. same time it's it can be in, in intrusive like you're in my face with this big uh you know square i don't know and uh that that's where that yeah, comes solid from. sturdy stubborn exactly you know he's he's a big metal dude he's like the perfect contrast to mickey to all these clothes on him and then mickey's oh, yeah. like in a one piece <laughs> you know <laughs> She, well, that's yeah. also the thing. Like, you'd think zombie apocalypse. Why she got a ponytail? Her her ponytail's <laughs> gonna get pulled. No, because she's always with Bone. Bone's not gonna let that happen. He's he's too big. Yeah. It ain't gonna happen. Yeah, but, she's uh, all voluptuous and vulnerable over she's here. She's all this vulnerable. Well, well that's enough. Hey, listen. What did Kojima say about a uh, quiet's design? Uh, if you remember that little controversy where he introduced, as Metal Gear does, the 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 female characters. They're always quite um voluptuous, but Quiet was like wearing nothing at all. And what Kojima tweeted at the controversy, he goes, and I'm not comparing myself to Kojima. He's a, that man's a crazy genius. But I will say, I like his philosophy. He goes, he goes, what, what the fuck was the quote? What was the exact quote? He goes, um, <laughs> when you learn, it was like this broken English. And he's like, when you learn the reason for her exposure, you will be ashamed of your deeds and actions. <laughs> <laughs> Bullshit because, like, she breathes through her skin or some shit. Like, oh, so that's why she's always, like, naked. (laughs) I'm not that ridiculous. Like, Miki is not some, like, cyber freak or whatever. She's just, you know, she's your typical girl. She's a a typical lifeguard girl. She's naive. And uh, that's that's the joy of this dynamic of the characters. That's where the personality comes in. You want to create the personality of your character right after you've done the design. But I shouldn't say right after because it's more so... A, a thing of, uh, you know, they go hand in hand. Uh, they, you, you don't want to rush into like designing them. You want to throw together several inter- iterations and then, you know, let it ferment in your brain. Maybe draw a bunch of sketches because like I said, it took me two years. It doesn't have to take you two years. I just was like, uh, I guess I was procrastinating and I just wasn't happy. It took me No, forever. dude, I have taken a lot longer. The the lady that, if you, if anyone sees my stream with fucking nothing going on on it, uh, the, the, the girl that you see there with the blue hair, my uh, space girl who was, I'm still debating on an actual name. It took me a good five fucking years to really solidify the look of her. She's not that different from what she used to look like, but it, it took me that long before I was like, all right, I'm comfortable with this design. Yeah. Yeah, and I've seen her a lot, and she's got a she's got the good colors, you know. She's got mm-hmm. uh she's got the I forget what that's called the it's literally called like stupid hair. I forget what it's called on the uh, <laughs> what like uh, the, the, the big yeah, like hair that pops up. Yeah, that's the little not, uh, the little alfalfa thingy. It's it like an alfalfa thing. I forget. What, I almost called it ahigao, but I know that's uh, <laughs> it's not, it's not <laughs> the hey go. Hey hey go. <laughs> whatever, like, whatever. I'm not, it's like, is this a fucking what a cowlick? I don't know. Yeah, so like with that, like what do you tell from that character? She's cute, she's a space girl. That's all you need to know. Boom. Mm-hmm. You know, you get a good silhouette going. That's another thing. I don't know if they talked Absolutely. about that because I had to walk my dog. I, I missed some of that stream um, with cute. I don't, think we, I don't think we covered. No, nah, they, they didn't, they didn't they cover the silhouette well, thing. That was the goal here with this. That was the goal here with this. Okay, so Bone, he's big, he's intrusive, he's square. Or, yeah, he's a big block, right? 
And uh, this isn't the best display of a silhouette because this big stupid ta- stupid cape is a mm-hmm. uh, tarp cape that keeps him from getting splattered. You know, when he's uh, when he's just completely uh, just uh, blending people with his bare hands. Um, he's got the pointy helmet. You know, he's got the broad shoulder things and the gloves stick out. So I liked, and then the spike shoes. We can't forget the spike shoes. Mm-hmm. It's stupid looking, but hey, sometimes you got to go stupid. Uh, but yeah, no. So the idea is, um, you know, you want a silhouette. Your character should should really stand out if you covered the whole thing in um in just black if your character was just a shadow Uh would you know it was if i if i coded mickey bell in just black ink would you know it was still mickey because of her uh big gloves just by her shape the uh by her shape yeah exactly so she's like like the external design i uh like there's like an internal and an external design to a character the external design is where you focus on like the uniqueness of their silhouette the internal design is like what's inside that uh their silhouette so some people i guess like in some instances if you have a very realistic kind of character and their silhouette's kind of mundane typically it's the things on the inside of that silhouette what kind of details they wear that might make them stand out more but uh if with my kind of style and everything since it's way more like triggerish gynaxy kind of thing uh, I definitely like to focus on like simplifying shit and making sure like the uh the external design stands out a lot yeah, a lot of panty and stocking influence, I can imagine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, but yeah, basically, yeah, the idea is the silhouette is, like, super important to that. And if you're a pixel artist, that's also, like, a huge deal if you're into that. But we got to get back to talking about comic. I'm, I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to uh, muscle in on uh, the yeah, old... It was uh, all relevant. It was for sure all relevant. I, I was okay. even going to talk about, like, uh, again, with the... Uh, uh, that shot that you did with your panel work uh, of just like um, uh, all the zombies surrounding the guy, it yeah. it makes your eye. It literally forces you to like have a like just a focal point. But not only that, but you kind of like your your attention spirals in to what's about to happen and like who's going to be at the epicenter of the next action, and then it's like kaboom. So it it, it does actually create this bit of like exciting tension because like uh, you're you're like manipulating the way that the scenes go, not only just the time but also just like. Oh, where well, what where you're paying your attention, and it can make it really. That's a, that's a super good point, fun. dude. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you zoom in, you see what he's doing, and then you zoom out, and it's just whoosh, that it gives you that kind of uh, it's kinetic. You know what I mean? But, yeah, absolutely. Um, Toriyama is like a huge, like I, I was talking about this uh, earlier, but Toriyama is a, uh, a a. I don't, I didn't read the Dragon Ball Z manga. But from what I've seen, the reason he invented Kai Blasts and like Kamehameha's is so that he could introduce the action going from one panel to the next. Let me see if I can find an example. If not, I'll have to, I might have one further on. But he, he leads the viewer's eyes, and a lot of mangaka do this, is they lead the viewer's eyes with like a limb. And that's what the line arts, the the whole, like, when they do, like, action lines, that's also a big deal. But, like, uh, my goal is, like, okay, so I'm trying to think of a, a, a good example here, but it's all kind of vague. What, what what I mean to say is if you're reading the panels from, from one to the next, like, you want it so that there's not something, like, there's a focal point to every single panel, basically. If you just have a character speaking, I guess you'd want the, the focal point to be the character's face. You know, mm-hmm. it's not that big a deal in that instance. You don't want to have something super distracting in the background that takes away from that character's face unless the focus is that thing on the back in the background. Yeah. But when it comes to action shots, you want to... Uh, back to Toriyama and his, like, Kai Blasts, uh, the, he... I think the whole reason he invented that is so he could draw that that energy shot coming from one direction of the panel to the next. Uh, he often does that. He'll break the panels up with like action, like a, a, a character's like jumping around or something. But the Kai Blast, you see the character's hands and then you see the, the, the energy shoot from the hands of the character mm-hmm. all the way across the panel, a long panel to the, to the character getting hit. And it is like you are watching it kind of unfold before your eyes because your, your eyes are being led in one direction to the next. So in that Absolutely. case, like the focal point would be, yeah, the Kai Blast, like you'd have multiples, I guess. And yeah, it's the all about blast like, and then especially the impact, like the yeah. damage that's involved, he, uh, just the reaction <laughs> of it, the uh, every, everything getting like stretched out of proportion, uh, that shit is, uh, that, that's to die for. 
That's why it exactly. influenced so many things after it. Yeah, so so I tried to focus on some of that too, but uh, I'm having a hard time finding an example here of one. I try, um, I don't know, I'll, I'll have to find one later on that, that's a better example of, of movement and direction. Yeah, but the well, whole goal is... I suppose, uh, then, uh, yeah, what were you going to say? No, you go, you go. Yeah, I suppose uh, as far as movement goes, uh, the kind of things that I, uh, the, the parts of the comic that I'm working on, I... I believe right now I'm up to about 20 or 21 pages, but for right now I'm going to just give a, an excerpt of about, uh, how many? About seven pages here. Uh, so, and these actually involve a lot of movement. I'm taking it from where the action actually picks up. So, in, uh, let me drag this over to my stream over here. Oh, yeah. Okay, right here. Uh, ugh, boy, that's probably really fucking tiny. Let me zoom in on this a bit. So, Here's like a here's like an action shot page going on uh, with Damn. my uh, space girl here. She has this uh, has a little bandage here and other uh, things uh, uh, of continuity that have yet to be explained. Uh, you know, one dollar, one dollar, one dollar. I uh, uh, I just had a, a lot of things going on here with like uh, certain dynamic shots. You don't see where a lot of this attack is coming from. I was just uh, this particular scene. Uh, she uh, uh, she notices a, a bit of a bit of a danger, a bit of a what's going on here. So she snaps in the fucking action and the kaboom kapow. And then uh, right over here on this panel, I don't split up the panel so much. This is also, a, I guess, an example of uh, of having like uh, duplicated uh, parts of the same character where it's not actually they're not actually cloned in the same scene. It's just showing bits of movement. And I uh, I, uh, I use this little shot right here, this little action shot, uh, like as a reference from like uh, Gurren Lagann whenever Yoko made her first appearance with her sniper and you just saw like most of her boot in that dynamic angle. I just wanted to feel like she's lunging into fucking action. Uh, like uh, she's she's up in arms, she's ready to go. She's putting all her training into action here. Um, let me see, go over to the next page. Um, now I, uh, I sort of, uh, get right here. The next page shows the impact of what, uh, what she's, uh, what she's hit, what she's been, what she's been attacking sort of blindly this entire time. Mind you, this is all, this is in like the fetal alcohol stage. Uh, this is, uh, hardly, you could, it's, it's light, it's sketched out, it's rough as fuck. Uh, but, uh, she just, uh, she kicked the shit out of something tiny with big guns. Here she is noticing what the hell that was. Here's the here's the attention of every of uh, all the other ones that didn't get hit. She's picking it up. It's a little rat. It's a little rat motherfucker. Uh, as you can see her expression here. She's not entirely a. Uh, <laughs> that's fucking wrong. <laughs> she wasn't anticipating what what she <laughs> was attacking with full force. Um, and uh, uh, I uh, I'll get into sort of uh, sort of why I, uh, I had a lot of this panel work in the way that I did it. Uh, I noticed the. Uh, especially for actiony shots, like uh, you see, like how uh, I not nothing's not all of them are divided very straight or whatever. There's some diagonals around here, like even the, in the last one, like uh, this uh, uh, this one's sort of like straight right there. But I uh, th this one sort of like cuts into an angle because like like angles that cut anything that looks like it has a cut just sort of slashes across your eyes. Just it it uh, it creates like this natural focal point from like big to small, just creating these uh. Just a shitload of triangles. So, I mean, for dynamic shit, I like to utilize a lot of, like, just seeing things as triangles for the most part. I mean, there's a... If you just look at the sort of, like, uh, just dissect the, uh, I guess, the anatomy of my style, that's what I go for whenever things need to be more action I suppose. So, I mean, uh, uh, go on to uh, the next page. Uh, you get to see a little more things going on here about, like... Uh, uh, not only just have this little little uh, little father father get stepped on for doing a, a very piss poor job uh, catches our attention. You get bam, this whole fucking also nameless oh, fucking yeah. character looks kind of like uh, the the there was a the little father with rats. She's uh, she's a big ass fucking uh, evil Power Ranger roach lady thing looking motherfucker. Uh, she uh, down down here she has a little blaster. She fucking the uh, 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 fucking space girl was holding. That right by the tail, she just blows it up. Fuck it, you're useless now. Fuck it. Uh, and uh, there she is with this uh, very, uh, very menacing, very sassy stance right there. Uh, also, uh, I uh, this probably took me a good day to sort of like just sketch, like get the design out for uh, drawing this character on the fly. But I really, I really wanted to do that thing that you see in some manga, where when they introduce a new character, like that whole character kind of pops out of the page and is like overlapping against the panel work and shit. Uh, 
it, that that also sort of like draws the attention, like just as an entire page to that uh, for the most part. Um, so it, which interestingly enough, when I'm reading manga like that and I go to the next page and I see like a character that's introduced, but like that's not this part isn't. Te- well, uh, let's see. Uh, I, guess I should explain that like uh, the way I'm doing the this particular comic would be read like a manga. So it's like from uh, from right to left. Uh, but so traditionally you would just, this would be the thing that you read next and then you trickle down and you go over here. Uh, but when you have things like this that stand out, it, that captures your attention first. So it's almost like you're kind of reading it backwards in a way. And then you see the rest of it that, uh, that sort of explains where that comes from. Uh, but like, uh, if it's done right in this way, where like just this, these are just little panels that aren't like super, that wouldn't be dialogue heavy. And I guess I should also, also mention I have not put a single bit of fucking dialogue in here yet because I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to have them ramble about. But uh-huh. it does help for the fact that um, not having too much dialogue there makes me essentially create these like hieroglyphs out of these characters that uh, I'm using their actions to sort of like illustrate uh, whatever kind of point I want to make. And that, I mean, I have idea of dialogue and certain lore aspects that I want to put in there uh, that I either have sort of jotted down somewhere that are just kind of inherently obvious to me. Uh, but like um, uh, it, it, being able to communicate it just through their actions and through like certain gestures and making them expressive, especially shit like that and shit like just the gesture of a pose and all this, uh, like how like how like this is a very confident, badass looking character, but she has her blaster all like laxed in her left hand and all this. Uh, like she's like uh, what, whatever whatever domain that she's a part of here, she has she has full control uh, and is not slightly worried about our uh, our dopey little uh, uh protagonist over here but um yeah I, I wanted to make sure that everything kind of like physically read very obviously as to what was going on which is also probably why toriyama in his manga and like certain other manga like that do so well is because like uh like action speaking louder than words uh, quite literally and then uh, here's an establishing shot of like uh you know her about to like take action just about to right, i'm not gonna waste any more time on uh on you i'm just gonna i'm just gonna go ahead and just uh uh fucking take your take your nice little blue ass out uh but um uh, i kind of switched up the i guess i because i because I, I was working on design here i uh i made this sort of uh it really touched up it doesn't look super super duper cartoony i would suppose it still looks kind of like uh, still has a lot of triangles very angular but down here i kind of simplified it a little bit uh, just because I kind of like the I kind of like the shift in tone in just how you draw the character once they're once they're like if they're if they're like standing still there's a bit more elegance to the design you sort of get the whole the whole thing there so you have context for what they look like and everything and then you can kind of once you're playing with them everything can get uh, a little bit more roughed up so uh, you get over to the next page uh, you have her ready to fucking blast as well like she's oh no fuck that I'm getting you the hell out of here this is a uh, this is all taking place in a uh, in a space girl ship, by the way, uh, just under the bearing. She didn't notice uh, what was going on here. Um, this is something I decided uh, to do uh, to play around with uh, because as soon as she uh, pulls out her blaster, she uh, she pulls it out faster and starts blasting away. So uh, our little uh, our little roach villain starts uh, scattering around really rapidly. But I played around with uh, the panel work and how she was moving. Essentially, she's doing this, you know, the kind of like after image thing. Whenever something's moving too fast, you see like a bunch of after images of them. Uh, this is just going around in a uh, in like in procession in a circle around around her right here in this panel. But in every other panel, I'm showing how like she's missing every shot for how fast she's moving. And yet uh, I try to it's a it's a really interesting little warpy fucking thing I did here where like this action right here reads as it should. But also within the other panels. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, uh, like in, in its angle and in her movements, it's just as chaotic. And then you know, right here, I got I got it to where like, okay, now I got the fucking shot, and she's facing right there. So it kind of works two like it works in two different dimensions. It works in this one panel where she's just uh, moving around fucking rapidly clockwise around here, and now she's like caught. Like, all right, I got you in my fucking sights, you little bastard. Uh, and then the next page, again, we have a shit ton of very angular, very slicey little panel work here. Uh, panel works. Uh, she, uh, this is where I might have her call out one of her fucking uh, bigger attacks because, you know, she has the little, she's got a little, uh, got a little uh, what, what do you call that? The fucking crosshairs, the little stars in her eyes, little crosshair stars because, you know, she's spacey. It's a she's got a twinkle in her eye. 
Yeah. She's got a, twi she's got a twinkle and she's about to blast uh, something <laughs> in her little stinkle. Uh, uh, here she is. She bounces. She jumps back in anticipation because she's coming in rapidly, but she still has the shot. Uh, she blasts a shot, and here's the part I wanted to get to as far as, uh, you know, uh, having, like, big key blast sort of, like, panel work. So, like, this this whole thing takes up this panel right here, just this horizontal panel, just boom. Oh, and yeah. then uh, uh, right down here, you got the little snap. She, she fucking dodges that shit and then uh, gets back into, uh, uh, just spins into her own, own orientation, starts to uh, dish some blast of her own, and uh, we come over to here, uh, and here's uh, some establishing shots of... Uh, because she was uh, like a uh, uh, fucking uh, space girl did just one big blast. She did a bunch of rapid blasts. Uh, I wanted to sort of, you know, hold tight to the idea that this is a very, this is a character that does things very snappy, very quick, very, in a, in a lot of, like, just uh, likes overwhelming force for the most part. Probably of some kind of military background or something. Or definitely works as a henchman, just trying to get things done for somebody else. But, uh. Uh, for the most part, yeah, the, this this one's establishing like, oh shit, there's a lot of blasts coming my way. I better be prepared for this one. There's not too much like like shock here, as in she's not ready to pre like prepared for it. I want it to keep like a bit of angry confidence there, like ah motherfucker, what are you kidding me? There's more. And then uh, she uh, she just uh, sort of backflip cartwheels out of the fucking way. There's some more of the uh, that uh, kind of like cloned sort of shot thing, uh, after image sort of thing. Uh, then. Uh, once she gets back up, she notices, oh, shit, what's going on here? I, uh, I, I'm i doing this all in Clip Studio uh, on my iPad. I like to do this thing that I see, sometimes that I see, oh, uh, I don't know how many other manga could do it. But, like, I saw, I've saw, i seen, like, uh, I guess in Naruto, uh, sometimes uh, fucking, uh, you would take one drawing, or at least Kishimoto would take one drawing and then just, like, duplicate it, I guess, and then slide it over just a little bit on She's top of the previous DTA drawing. Yeah, she just looks fucking, like, blurred out, and it fucks with your eyes like crazy. I love that. But I also try to play off of the whole shadow clone jutsu sort of thing, so she has, like, this sort of, like, Ninjago kind of, like, a uh, uh, fucking, uh, like, a uh, hand symbol up, this little mudra up. And she she actually now has uh, fucking physical clones of herself, and she's now going to do that same rapid blast just three times as, uh, you know, she's going to fuck her shit up. And fuck her shit up, she does. So I have this establishing shot of like, oh motherfucker, there's, it's all it's all over the place. The fucking it's so intense that I turned into a silhouette. If you can fucking see it, it's light and rough as hell. Uh, there's just a, there's a lot of damage being dealt here. Uh, not a lot of damage that you can see. There she is, just a, just a just a smoking husk on the ground. Um, this is something I also picked up as far as panel work thing from like uh, uh, usually I see in One Piece. I'm using all the big three. For my inspirations this is not uh, a lot of a lot of my uh, visual inspirations do not go run that deep this is all just the big three of shonen but like i noticed that in uh, one piece sometimes within like you have this little panel sliver right here this is just to show like a sense of not really anticipation but also to sort of give you a sense of time i suppose but also to like make you feel like the camera sort of panning over from like right to left just a little bit more slowly uh, because there's also, you know, the, once you divide the panel, it's sort of like, this is, these are areas and like timestamps where you're getting, like keeping your attention. Uh, so like it goes, it transitions from that all the way to here where, uh, uh, her hands now coming out, grabbing our, our, our beautiful little protagonist here, uh, still silhouetted. Um, I might take this part out, uh, cause I was, uh, I was just, you know, I was just fucking around with panel work and seeing like how many other fucking panels or things I'd really need here. Uh, but I was like, ah, maybe I could do the same thing of just, like, I don't know, uh, putting another line right there so it kind of, like, feeds to the idea of sort of, like, moving the camera up or down a little bit. Uh, just sort of, like, feeding this sense of anticipation and dread, I suppose, or, like, just there's this fucking looming threat right over her. Uh, it almost looks her, like uh, she's zapping her. Yeah, uh, fucking, and then she just, uh, I, I, did, <laughs> I was trying so hard to, like, make her throw her, like, uh, like she was, like, like chucking a fucking baseball i i couldn't for the life of me in this space like i, I didn't know how to fucking do it so i just compensated and just did the all right you know fuck that it good, and she dude. just she just tosses her over her shoulder i'm like okay that's a bit better because it just looks more pathetic yeah um and uh that's uh that's all i that's that you'll have to fucking see what the hell happened to her uh by going to uh what patreon chill 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 patreon yeah, do it uh, give give me bunny simp like fucking what's crazy your, what's the end of the page what's the What's the last part of the Patreon? 
uh, last part of the Patreon. It's uh, what? Uh, uh, Patreon slash, slash, yeah. Slash a theory on art. Yeah. Here we go. That's that, uh, dude, that has like big Gynax energy too. It does. Oh, yeah. love. I'm blown away. Actually, no, don't go. Go back yeah. to the first page. I wanted to talk. <laughs> yeah. I've been reading it. I was like, I want to jump in here and say, we look uh-huh. at that, like, yo, zoom in on that on that upper half, like. The way that that's what I was talking about, like this is a way better example of like action dynamicism, like whatever you want to see, because the way her gun is used as a uh, as a sort of um, like a focal point that directs the viewer like Mm -hmm. she it it goes from, you know, right immediately to left. You know exactly what's going on. She's like clearly like dodging around a corner or something. She's trying to corner something and then boom, she shoots. And like, what does it scroll down? Like what happens? He she. You fucking, there's some explosions or some. <laughs> oh, yeah, the explosion <laughs> panel that like breaks it up. And then I love the friggin' Yoko foot going on. Uh-huh. You got the Yoko boot. I was so then, proud uh, of that one. I was like, dude, oh, that, it looked dude, like that's God. that's big Gynax energy. That's unreal. I, Absolutely, I can't, yeah. I can't just finish. Oh, <laughs> we can, we can even compare your two intros as like different kinds of like. I don't want you... to. I feel bad now. It's, it's yeah, way better. I mean, because like this isn't even technically. <laughs> this, this is just like. This I would say is like halfway through what I have so far. Uh, my so intro starts think- off like way slower, way more sluggish, way more. Uh, the the really what I'm driving this off of this I wouldn't even consider this the official first chapter or anything. This is more like a I guess the the like the one shot before I really try to like get everything else done. The kind of pilot. This is like mm. I mean the what I'm driving inspiration wise from this uh, is like. I don't know, kind of, it's more of, I guess it's more of a personal thing because I I was doing, cause like I went through like this fucking two and a half month hiatus. And from all that, I'm like, yeah, I may as well utilize a lot through during my break and fucking uh, put some uh, create, like uh, have that feed my uh, creative juices, I suppose, just sort of a, a feed off of whatever that, that was just actually. Uh, uh, so I like, like, uh, like it starts off with her kind of just like, uh on the floor uh fucking just like uh uh just drunk off of her mind just like uh just fucking drooling uh just like well i'm straight edge so i don't fucking uh, i don't uh, i don't know what the, that's supposed to fucking look like when you're when you're passed out on uh on too many uh big boy drinks but fucking uh she's just a a fucking slurry wreck uh she's, she's just uh, she's throwing shit around um uh this uh but this is definitely where things pick up in it uh, but, um, uh, that's also why right here in the background that I have, this is actually the banner, uh, that I keep changing around for my, uh, for my Twitter and my new grounds and all that. Uh, it's me just sort of just kind of adding a little bit of that story into like, into areas where people, uh, that probably haven't seen or know about the comic, uh, can get a little bit of a, a little bit of a deep lore glimpse or some shit. And all those little just glass cups are just shit that she's drank this whole time. Uh-huh. She's just a... She's just uh, slightly plastered and irritated or whatever. I just love the, I love fucking around with her expressions and shit. I just, I did that very recently. That felt really good to do. But like, that's a, uh, uh, that I'm really focusing on giving her a lot of like expressiveness, uh, like, uh, like beyond just like sort of like uh, cutesy and timid. I like those aspects, obviously. I want to add more to it because then it just, it's more fun to, it's more fun to like have around. I, uh, I, and uh, it helps to like, you know, because I get to draw her in more like varied circumstances and situations. Uh, so like, uh, like, like doing all this stuff uh, right here helps to solidify the way I designed her as a character as well, because I mean, of course I've been drawing her yeah. over and over again. I have established hardly any other characters up until the bug lady and those fucking rats uh, with those massive guns. Uh, so it's, it's really just been like, uh, like the, all the, all the dialogue, all the attention has been on uh, this young gal over here. Or I don't know how fucking old she is. I could have swore that was the intro. I could have swore we were looking at the fucking intro. Yeah, I can see it being completely like how it starts off. That's why I was like, oh shit. (laughs) Yeah, dude, chances are now. I'm like, damn, like (laughs) it's ass. And I love how you made a like she's like a super bubbly colored kid. She's got like the baby blues and she's got um Uh she's got the cute Kirby cheeks, but it's not blush. She's just she's drunk. (laughs) <laughs> being drunk i love yeah. it That's i love I, I had it popping off of her body like just like off yeah. of a little bit just to sort of because they're always there to exaggerate that all right there uh, there's something else going on here. it's a bit more loopy 
I nice. yeah, I absolutely uh, I adore that. That's a uh, I love fucking around with uh, her character because I've had her around for so long. I I kind of because they become a part of you for sure. Whenever you have OCs and oh, yeah. shit, and you like you want to like like make something more out of them. I'm definitely working on shit for uh, if anyone's um, uh, familiar with her, my uh, my witch uh, Casey Pumpkin. Uh, I I was I've definitely uh, thought about more shit for her to do uh to like in her own world and like more lore for her if anyone's also seen uh uh my uh what morta that fucking uh grim reaper chick that i uh hell like, yeah a while back she's part of the same world as casey uh-huh. a lot of the halloweeny stuff i'm i'm trying to that one i'm gonna bog down on more story wise but i haven't conceptualized it because i'm using i'm using a uh, space girl here because i've had her since 20 fucking 15 as just a means to be like, all right, you know what? If I'm going to experiment with anything, have fun with something, just sort of like have this like just, uh, I don't know, just personal dribble. Just make make something kind of, I guess it might. My expectations is setting on making it feel kind of experimental, but that's just to save face in case it's shitty. <laughs> so then I can just yeah, say, like, oh, it was, a, it was a stylistic choice. It was a direction. It was just choice. a test. That's all it was. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know what the fuck they're talking about. You have all these typos. Like, no, it's a different language. It's a, ah, fuck it. But. Yeah, that's a, so, you know, this is going to be, it, I, fuck, I worked on this longer than I thought I would, because I started this, like, March 12th or some shit, March 18th, uh, so this is this is for sure going to be a passion project. I think I'm, I should, I haven't set a, a number for, like, of pages in, until I'll be done, and I can probably divide it up into, like, different chapters at this fucking point, because I'm up to over 20 pages, but, like, uh, uh, I feel like I'm definitely just over the uh, just just over the fucking halfway point of uh, of this thing, and I have yet to draw it. I have yet to draw it, but I will say, uh, considering that uh, her opponent, uh, let me get back to her uh, right there. Considering that her opponent has a has a little fucking uh, little uh, little Power Rangers E design, little Super Sentai design. Yeah, I'm very rock, inspired dude. by that shit. Uh, uh, and she seemed to be getting her ass handed to her a little bit there. Maybe, maybe, just maybe Space Girl needs to have a bit of an upgrade of her own. I don't know. I, don't know. I, I like maybe that right that. now she's looking at the comic like this motherfucker. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I got my ass yeah. whooped. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. I, I love to, I love to, like, it's it. Fucking, the thing that fuels artistic passion is schizophrenia. You want to just, uh, in any, in any time, Go happy and have your characters breaking all the walls they can. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Perfect. I love how um you got a you got the character, the main character, and she's just like yeah, she's the bubbly, cutesy looking, and then she's up against friggin' Psycho Ranger over here, Lady yes. Psycho <laughs> Ranger. Like I yeah. love that. Uh, we got a we got something similar going. We got uh except <laughs> mine aren't villains; they're friends. We got uh, <laughs> a similar yeah. theming there. I yeah. love that shit. So I was the. Uh, all you, all you cheapskates out there that haven't patroned yet, this is all you get for free. But uh, there's some more stuff I want to go over as far as like, uh, like how I, how, how I, how I've like, I haven't really, I guess, officially learned it. But like the uh, segmenting uh, panels, like, like horizontally, mm-hmm. which is a lot easier to explain visually than it is uh, like verbally. Uh, give us so, a, give us a can you give us a tiny bit more just a little bit of a taste come on <laughs> <laughs> Luke you're addicted now <laughs> you know I like the dynamic I like just the 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 di- dynamic diagonals going on yeah I know I have to drag you by your fucking collar and just let you for it. <laughs> oh so, shit let me see something here now as far as like inspirations go uh let me try to get this all in fucking because I need multiple ones up here uh motherfuck uh all right so right here. Uh, this is, uh, from the Panty and Stocking manga, which isn't, like, made by any of the, you know, big three by, like, Imaishi or whatever. Uh, it's made by some other who's a what's it. But this particular style, and this, like, because I like Gainax and shit, but also just the way that they dealt with their paneling here is fucking beautiful to me. Because not only do you have, like, a lot of, like, the dynamics here, everything's drawn very simplistically, but clearly with a lot of like experience in mind because you can't just draw like a fucking humvee like that in that particular and with that kind of perspective and that structure in mind how solid that feels and like the way the characters are interacting with it the way she's fucking like hauling ass in that motherfucker uh like the wind that's blowing all the fucking dust that's coming up in the fucking like the this motherfucker knew what they were doing but did it in a very stylistic way did it in a style that i like to consider like very graffiti style or whatever things just kind of like pop and just feel like striking as fuck in their own way. Uh, but 
like this entire top panel right here is dominated uh, uh just by just pretty much all the uh, all the props and all like the characters and all the all the things inside of the panel so it One like it, it, in and of itself uh, kind of shapes it 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 i like how the text and like i try to do this too uh -huh. um, but uh the text separates the imagery yeah and kinda, you can use the text as a as a way of making it flow from one panel to, to the next that's another thing i've been doing a lot lately too and i uh i think that's pretty damn yeah cool. absolutely and not only that it's just like it being a part of the action itself it is inside yeah. of the smoke it just and that's something that they did in the in the show itself the show itself is stylish as fuck because they actually kind of like you watch it again, and it does feel like you're just looking at like someone like flipping through pages of some kind of a comic because it's a Pop very western inspired as well. Uh, but you have like you know the, you have a lot of again just like the very there's like these diagonal slants down here that just make panels look more interesting when it just Sharp. looks when the fucking squares and shit just look a bit angry. And uh, you have like you don't have a lot of shit occupying inside of these areas. I mean you have, I mean in a way it it's all simple, but you have everything there you have the background you have buildings you have the sky you have a plume of some shit and you have the other characters in there so you have a lot of different elements in here but it's all done very simplistically but it doesn't have to be a uh like you don't you don't have to overdo it with the details because they would get lost any fucking ways like you don't have to have someone in the like the third window over here like with their dick out or anything uh it's not going to be noticed unless they're going to be relevant somewhere over here or some shit right uh but what i wanted to point out that was interesting about the dissecting these panels is just like uh they 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 did it in like oh did it pop up oh there it is okay so they did it like this where it's like in uh like it's dissected in like these two different parts now there's three panels in total but when you're looking at things horizontally as far as like or rather whenever you're looking at things from like like from top to bottom uh this one is dissected and just like there's technically like two major areas where like the action is like separated like this this whole this whole upper part is about getting somewhere this whole like other part on the bottom is what they're getting to or what they're coming to uh let me see what's a what's another good example here i'll uh, i guess i'll kick the the colorful ones up here's one of the same manga where it's like uh, dissected into three and i've noticed that it usually in a lot of in a lot of series a lot of pages they usually dissect these things between like like uh like three like i would say between from like uh if there's a lot going on from between like two to about four different segments and i have a couple of examples of what i mean there so i mean like up here in this upper area you have this line of action that's going on down here you have like uh this line of action that's sort of like all of this is relevant to one another and down here uh, if you can like see it beyond the fucking uh like three 2003 3d glasses sort of thing right here uh the whole thing of like the characters popping out and sort of overlapping against the previous panels and shit just i yeah. god i fucking i i absolutely love that just showcasing uh the characters like that which is usually necessary if they're like wearing something different or something has changed about them that sort of stands out so like all this area this area is like relevant to one another they're pulling up and then here they are out of the car or whatever so like these three different states it also keeps in check of like how much is going on inside of one page like there's not a whole lot that's like uh like this whole upper area uh isn't like spread throughout the the entire page like this whole dialogue that they're having here there's not too many scenes for it everything is like like capsulated and crystallized where it needs to be so really in this one page you got like about three major things going on here uh what's another good example i would say uh uh, here's another were those one things like, separated? Were, were were they like basically condensed story segments, basically? But just they were they were the like it's the same story, really. Yeah. Uh, but like within the story of just like what you're transitioning to oh, and okay. uh, what things what things like what what's like necessary to say for the next part, and uh, that's uh, that's pretty much uh, how I'm like dividing these. Uh, this one comes from the Little Witch Academia. Again, just another trigger guy and actually thing that's turned into a manga that's illustrated by somebody fucking else, uh, like. This one is uh, interesting in how it's dissected because, like, you know, you would see some of these establishing shots where it's not quite the full color, like, not full color, like, the full spread where they take up, like, two pages to show something extravagant. This is sort of like the half halfway version. It's sort of like the 2% milk version of that uh, where, like, uh, like uh, you have an establishing shot of, like, oh, look at this. This is a little MacGuffin right here. And then this entire area, right, is, like, sort of segmented as, like, oh, okay, here's, like, the reaction to that thing and some of the effects mm -hmm. of that. Uh, so like this is like bisected for the most part uh, laterally or longitudinally, uh, whatever the fuck. 
Uh, let's see. Uh, you usually have uh, things that are... Uh, oh, let me save that one. Because before that page, it was this page. This is something I want to bring up. Because I said that a lot of these are usually dissected in about four different like states in like per page or like the way your eyes move from like up uh, like up to down or whatever like this uh this one actually uh goes into about what six different panels in one uh well i guess six different like uh like horizontal panels into one page and that what that's doing there is establishing a lot of anticipation and it draws out time the more panels you usually have the more time that you're dealing with in that particular scene and it keeps cutting between like uh these different states of like what's going on in the conversation uh so like all the things that i have colored in red are relevant to one another all things colored in blue are relevant to one another like uh so you see this establishing establishing shot of like something that's like sparkling something that's like oh what's going on here these uh these are these are uh these are two different things that are happening right now but uh what is it leading up to so it creates a sense of like tension and anticipation and, and they all of course, and they like, all kind of uh, relate to each other in a sense but that's yeah. one of the things I tried to do that uh and and it's easy to fuck that up. I will say uh-huh. it's easy to overwhelm the reader and just put too much in one in one page and just like cuz if you're jumping between like okay, this is this and this is that, it's like you just got to be mm-hmm. careful about that shit. Yeah, like either doing too much or doing too little because boring them can also like like it, like unless you're building up to something that could really uh that could fuck up the the overall the rhythm and momentum establishing here so in a way i've always i kind of see like the panel work as like a a a sort of unspoken tertiary or secondary character because it's almost it's just as important as like i would say like yeah sometimes you don't have to stylize the panels if you can like if what's inside of them really stands out but like uh that helps so much in the just sort of like making it feel exciting to just see what's going on and it can kind of especially like even if there is some like areas where it might be dialogue heavy or whatever it makes up for it so as long as it's interesting to look at because we do a quintessential part of our being is that we have babies that focus primarily on shapes and colors and all you're dealing here with here is like shapes if it's just black and white at least in my case so i have to make sure things are nice and stylistic but uh here's another example of like one where it's bisected into four different areas like for uh, for like per page which is usually how i see that going down uh here's one of the uh like the double page spread sort of things and this is also interesting how they dealt with the panels over here where like it's not really like the panels kind of pop out and they they feel like they're just like snip like snipped up pieces of paper like a fucking ransom note just sort of strewed about the, this area but it's, it's all like properly organized for like the like the second half of the page but um like you have this whole area that's just just this one big ass scene that has this focal point of like these characters running away from this overgrown chocobo uh and then you have like uh, uh of course uh, a lot of the dialogue going on uh in because it's like it's kind of like the same thing as that last one that i had where it was like split like from like left to right where the one you one the one spot you have the the action shot like the big fucking thing the thing you want to stick in your fucking head because it's like climactic or some shit and here's the sort of like uh the reactionary area or like how that uh just the uh I guess the consequences of whatever action is established here and how that's being dealt with, I suppose. So, I mean, uh, even though that these two areas are like dissected right here and those would technically count as like another panel range. um, It's, it's really interesting to note here how like, like the author, like, like they, they dissected these two panels with just a straight line, but they dissected these two with like a bold line so that they're clearly separated. Mm-hmm. But like, that's mainly because uh, these two areas, these two panels are completely relevant to one another. So like mm-hmm. they're, uh, they're, they're, they're touching, uh, they're more intimate. So, <laughs> so like it lets your eye kind of skate to it very easily. Like these scenes are kind of getting cut really quickly because they're in a rush. Uh, that was, ve- that's very interesting to me. And I guess also to note, um, whenever I dissect these like this, uh, like like horizontally, uh, usually when you have panels that are side by side inside of these little things like that, uh, as far as how many, I guess it, I don't really think there's a rule to how many times you can dissect like panels within the horizontal parts whenever you're looking like up up and down like that, uh, because those are just sort of like there for how you skip through certain parts of the dialogue, I suppose. Uh, those those sort of count for like the micro amounts of time. I suppose, like, uh, within this little block, uh, and uh, say you had, like, about, I don't know, you have these two panels, but say you had, like, I don't know, four or five of them, 
uh, this area accounts for just like a small amount of different increments of time going on in this scene. Uh, so like all these are essentially different scenes or whatever. And the scenes uh, are what really count for the bigger chunks of time. Uh, so like whenever you're dealing with these things uh, it, within these different scenes, I guess you can have pretty much as many of those fucking things as you want. Uh, uh, it's just it's about those, consistency. If you're going to yeah. do something weird and experimental, just be consistent with it. And uh, people will pick up pretty much as long as it's not too insane. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. So what's this? They're, they're capturing like a cockatrice? I'm not fucking <laughs> sure. Uh -huh. I, I, yeah, I, I legit and just And then it flips out. Up, they they steal style. a feather from it and then it goes crazy. And, and it's all building up to like what they're collecting off it. That's what I get from that. <laughs> I have completely for fucking got what in the oh, hell they're shit. doing. We gotta read it. Uh, I, I, I enjoy what they do with the negative space by putting a lot of like movement yeah. lines. Like yeah, so. absolutely. They have to yeah because all of the all the text right here, a lot of the uh, what the sort of reaction of the onomatopoeia kanji shit. It just it, all of it is like like that. Let this character, all these little characters right here, they're zooming in to like the actual action itself. So it, your yeah, eye is drawn to it. There's a lot of negative space here technically, but it's utilized properly. Yeah. And there's like rush lines on the bottom so that you can feel the momentum coming forward. And then this, this is just where like your eyes are drawn. But like, I guess another thing about panel work out there it is like when it, without the colors, but like uh, a lot of things, another thing about the panel work that I noticed, like uh, a lot of them aren't like too samey between the, uh, between the different panels. Because you have these two up here that are bisected, and then uh, you have it bisected again down here. They're not like right next to each other because it it can kind of look jarring to literally have a a comic that like it reads almost like you're looking through a window pane. And some of them are like that because they're just simple comics to look through, like fucking uh uh what, what a pop team epic or some shit, uh where it's just it's these are just like simple blocks to just tell kind of more of a very news newspaper comic story or whatever but like if there's a lot of action and flow uh sometimes you want to make it feel like you're looking at like uh like a brick layout like uh like things aren't entirely too even in the way that you're looking at it so everything stays more interesting stays more unpredictable really what i do what your eyes want to see when i have those lines separating them that are like off kilter like that sometimes i'll do like a little jaggy in there and it'll be like uh -huh. a lightning bolt separating it and when i do that it means like there's the situation is getting stressful before a final like pop off basically yeah so like with this with the cockatrice situation here it's like okay they're jaggy they're a little unstable they yeah like you said they look like bricks but they also look like bricks that are just like ready to slide off each other and then boom it explodes mm -hmm. and i think the goal is like start off simple with your with your presentation with the with how you manipulate those those lines just design the scenes first that's what i do i design yeah. the scenes and then and then the um the lines separating them come after because yeah it's 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 a balancing act you want to make sure you get it so that they actually flow still without um being too distracting but you also want to have fun with it absolutely yeah you have to make it like easy enough to read but also uh, fascinating enough because they like if there's there's way too much going on you're just going to give like the reader a headache even if they're not there's not yeah. that much to read it can uh like if you're just, if you put too much like uh detail in there that's scattered about it becomes hard to even register what the fuck you're reading for the most part i guess sometimes i guess uh what i, I love like this is probably my favorite manga to read that uh, to date uh, just like one piece and all that because of just the sheer amount of like work that goes into it but my lord, uh, motherfucker packs a lot of shit within every page, like he's uh, like he's like strapped for time. So sometimes, I mean, it's kind of nice to have like a little because I guess the pun there is is like it's a scavenger hunt to see the little details in every page in one piece. But like uh, sometimes when there's so much shit crammed in there, it becomes like it's it, like it's hoarding so much information. It's hard to really like like separate shit and see what uh, like have everything flow properly. That uh, was that my issue when I first started, uh, when I first uploaded, well, I didn't upload it yet, but when I was reading through it, my initial, uh, my like first episode of Splatterbrain, I had to stick additional pages in between uh, certain pages because I was like, how are they jumping from this part to this part? Like I had to kind of do the opposite where I had to spread everything out between pages. And mm -hmm. uh, luckily, like if you do that and you upload to something, you can just uh, you can edit it whenever you want, and then just gaslight your readers and say, "No, that page was always there. It always was." <laughs> like that. That's yeah, the advantage we have as 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 uh, web comic artists, basically.
Three, yeah. three minute, uh, two minutes left. Uh, shoot your questions quick. Shoot your questions at at, at Luke and Aether. Yeah, quick. Like, and while you're doing that, let me shield my Patreon. Uh, patreoncom slash love. That's patreoncom slash love. I had a hard time getting that out. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> Read Don't ask about Google. my fake titties. Don't ask about Google. my social security. Yeah. Also, uh, also, Aether has his Patreon. Follow that. Splatterbrain yeah. came out with a new chapter. What was that? Like, uh, two... Earlier this month. And there's another one heading through. Aether, you might like Splatterbrain. You might... Uh, it gets a it little experimental with them <laughs> It looks pretty Give it a look. It's free. The it colors are wild in Splatterbrain. I hope you never censor the blood, because I feel like it's a good contrast against, like, sense, a lot of the blues. Sense, but I want to make, I want to make it more colorful. Oh. Let me let me let me let me, uh, let me answer this first one that I saw here. All what what made you start doing uh, these comics? Now for me, I love. I think like storytelling is probably like the pinnacle of like an art like how you can artistically express yourself because within storytelling you can pretty much add anything else that you want in there. You have uh, you have like writing elements, you have visual elements, and if it ever gets animated or some shit, not not saying that's like a goal, I guess, but I wouldn't I wouldn't mind it. You have musical shit, you can just. Uh, Nice ways to manipulate the your little emotions and shit, just so you feel you feel nice and nice and fuzzy. <laughs> yeah, my answer to that is uh, I just was was sick of most media, and I was bored by a lot of decisions they made in in a lot of horror fiction. And uh, I just said, you know what? I'll just you know be the change you want to see. I said I'll make something that I can enjoy, and uh, hopefully I've I've done that. I think I've done that. I think you've done yeah. it well. Thank, Thank you, you, Ethereum Art. Thank you, Luke Valentine right. Art. Thanks for having me, man. It was awesome being on here. I hope I wasn't too cringe for uh, the... You uh, weren't. A lot of people in chat were, were like, dude, Luke is a is a bro. I like the way he talks. Good luck to the next dude. He, he's, he's got some intense animation tips. He does. So Nine Hammer, great animator. That room oh. is opening up here soon. Thank you, Ethereum. Thank you, Luke Valentine Art. That was very informative. Uh, I hope I can get you guys on here again sometime in the future. Yeah, I would kick yeah. ass. I missed the one last year because I didn't have a setup yet, but I am so fucking... Dude, this whole time has felt like a fucking convention. I am so stoked about that. <laughs> yeah, so it feels my so fucking good. I, I know Hell it yeah. Me. We got to talk about some art. We got to talk about comics and development. Like, it feels good to talk about art. You can't, yeah. like, you can't deny that. All yeah, right. see all the things that I like. It's, oh, God. Oh, motherfucker. Yeah, I'm just here pantsless and sweating the shit. It's, <laughs> it's great. <laughs> I'll, I'll see you guys uh, later. Hopefully sometime in the future. Peace, fellas. Peace. I might stick around just to watch a lot of the other shit, but uh, I, I got I got nothing to fucking do. But hell yeah. yeah.